It might seem a bit of an odd thing to be setting up a clothesline in the middle of a park. Tasha, would you mind lending me a hand? Thank you. If you stand on the wall there, that'd be brilliant. Just hold that. There we go. But there's a very simple shot which I've taken in my garden on quite a few occasions, and I thought it'd be a good thing to test these lenses with, to compare them. And it's a little tip for you to go out and take quite an interesting picture without too much effort. Lenses always perform at their worst at the extremes. If you're at full zoom and maximum aperture, that is when you're going to see the least image quality. So if we're going to put the two together, let's see what we get when we shoot this image. I'm going to be shooting along these lines and using the fuzziness over there beyond the little stream as a background. The light's coming through the pegs, they're translucent, which will bring up the colours and make them look pretty cool, I hope. Cameras, lenses. Both of these lenses, the consumer lens and the professional lens, they're in identical bodies. I'm not using different cameras. I've also got the cameras set up so that the white balance, the ISO and everything in the menu is identical. So it's a fair test of the lenses. The reason I'm not swapping them over is because I don't like swapping lenses too often. I don't want to get dust and bits in the camera. Pro lens first. Widest aperture which in this instance is f2.8. That's a very, very wide aperture. Check the ISO, we're down to 200. Maximum zoom, that's 200 millimetres. And I'm just going to look along these pegs and I'm going to focus on the red one. Here we go, like that, and squeeze the shot. Perfect. Same shot using the consumer lens. Just check our ISO, 200. Widest aperture, which in this instance is 5.6. It's not such a wide aperture. And that will have an impact on the way the image looks. More on that in a moment. Let's get my angle right. So I've got Tasha's elbow in shot. There we go. That's a bit. There it is. Perfect. Let's compare the two. Now this isn't the best way to compare an image in the LCD in the back of a camera. However, click the download link beneath this film and you can download these images and compare them for yourself. I'm gonna mark them up so you know which is which. I'm not gonna mess around with them in Photoshop or anything like that, but I am gonna resize them and make them a bit smaller so that they download at a sensible rate. Now, first off, comparison looking at the two. Colour-wise, I'd say there's not much in it, but then these LCDs are not really the best way to go about it. If I zoom in onto the spring, yeah, that's nice and sharp, it's nice and crisp and lovely. If I zoom in onto the spring of this one, the red, again, I'm always looking at the red one with the consumer lens, there is a softness to it. Now, the middle of the lens is where it's performing at its best. So if we've got a softness at the middle of the lens, using the consumer lens, then it's going to be a bit worse as you move to the edges of the image. What do I mean by the edges? I mean by the sides. So I'm standing probably pretty much in the middle of your picture. The edge would be about here and about here, either side toward the edge of the frame. So we'll do a little test with that as well. No, we won't. I'm sorry. I'm going to do a test at another aperture. I'm forgetting what I'm doing. I've planned so many things for this film and I keep forgetting what I'm going to do. I want to shoot it at the smallest aperture. Let's go to f22. That's going to increase depth of field. More on that in a moment. Because I want to see what happens with a smaller aperture and the same shot. To get that shot, now I've got a smaller aperture, I need a faster shutter speed or else I'm going to get camera shape. My shutter speed has dropped dramatically. It's, it's really very low at the moment. It's only about a thirtieth of a second. So the way to do that is increase the ISO because I can't do anything else if I want to use the aperture which I've chosen, f22. 1600 ISO, line up the shot. Yeah, that looks nice. Same again here. And to make sure it's a f fair comparison, I'm going to boost the ISO on here as well. 1600, there it is. Go to f22, there it is, and take the same shot. Whoa, it's very warm today. I'm sweating like a stuck pig. Here we go. There we go, there's the two. Let's just pop these side by side again. I'm gonna have a quick zoom in and see what we've got. Again, I'm always focusing on that red peg, this one here, so it's the second peg back in the shot. 
have a little look. Yep, that's nice and sharp all around the red peg. That's very sharp actually. That's really nice. That's good. And as you can see, if you go between the wide aperture shot and the smaller aperture shot, depth of field has changed as well. There shouldn't be much impact at f22 between the two lenses. I'm just looking at image quality. Image quality with the pro lens, f22, very good indeed, from what I can see here. Zooming in, f22. It's okay, it's acceptable, but there is a definite softness just to the very edges. It's kind of slightly fuzzy. Edge sharpness, I mentioned that, didn't I? So let's take a couple of shots and look at the edges of the frame. What I'm going to do is to line up these here. I'm going to have one on the edge, one on the edge, one in the middle. So let's have a go. Now uh, back to our widest aperture, f5.6. I'm going to take the ISO back down again to 200 so that it's a fair test. And just line up my shot. Jenny, can you stand to one side just slightly? Thank you. That's plenty. Thank you. Focusing on the red peg. Back a bit. And filling the frame. So we've got a peg on either side. Here it comes. And one more for luck. Excellent. Same again with this lens. Back to our widest aperture. In this case it's 2.8. ISO back down to 200. And, oh, let's do like that so I know I'm square on. Perfect. With a little zoom in on the pro lens. From what I can see here, the pegs on either side are equally sharp. I wouldn't say there's much difference. There might be a hint of softness actually, but it isn't very much. The one in the middle is beautifully sharp. With a consumer lens, Tasha, relax, you can drop the line actually. <laughs> Thanks, Nat. Let's have a look. Actually, it's fairly uniform, but it's uniform slightly soft throughout. Now, this isn't a big softness, this isn't an immense issue. All I'm saying is, it's not quite as good as the pro lens, but as you know, nearly all the pictures on all the films we've done before have been shot with this lens. They're not that bad. This is about you making up your own mind if it's worth spending the bucks. The thing with the pro lens and the big aperture and the depth of field difference is this is going to give you a big advantage if you want to start isolating a subject from the background. Say you want to isolate a face in the crowd or shoot a portrait with a very blurry background. The blurry background with the wide f2.8 aperture is absolutely brilliant. It's perfect for it.